Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 at VA Claims Consulting, leave no vet behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing you another video as it pertains to the Department of Veterans Affairs. And today I'm gonna to be discussing, are veterans getting scammed? And if so, what can you do to help prevent it, okay? But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. And also, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So today's video, are veterans getting scammed and what can you do to help prevent it? The answer to that is yes, veterans are getting scammed. I received an email from the VA and if you subscribe to the VA's email newsletter, you should receive the same email. There are individuals or organizations out there targeting veterans and it seems like they're targeting the elderly veterans and trying to go after their pensions, the VA pensions, okay? Now, I have a couple of slides I'm gonna share with you. The one is gonna be the email that I received from the Department of Veterans Affairs. And then a second one is a link that they shared uh, within that email as well. Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you some things that you do, you can do that I think that you can do to help prevent this if you get a phone call from a scammer, okay? So the first um, slide I'm gonna show you, this is the email uh, that I received. So if you received this email, I uh, hope you went through it and read it. So I'm gonna just read uh, first a uh, couple of paragraphs. The first one, first paragraph states, have you received a suspicious call from an organization claiming to represent or have an affiliation with the Department of Veterans Affairs? And that's key claiming to represent or have affiliation, right? Did the caller guarantee a lucrative payout for your disability compensation or pension claim for a small fee, all right? That's key. If so, you may be uh, you may be a target of a scammer. Recently, VA has seen an increase uh, fraud of uh, frauders and non-accredited representatives who are targeting the pension benefits of elderly veterans and their dependents and survivors, okay? So it's people out there that's just targeting certain vets, uh, trying to do something with their compensation and or pension, all right? VA is committed to defeating frauders, uh, fraud frauders who target elderly veterans by educating them, there's that word that I always use, education, educating them, their families, and all partners about the types of fraudulent tactics being used against them, including pension poaching. Now, when I read this pension poaching, I was kind of shocked because I've never heard of pension po uh, poaching. I know what uh, scammers, you know, what they what they try and do, but I never heard it called pension uh, poaching. So I clicked on this link and the VA shared it, okay? So here they're talking about, I'm sorry, uh, I was on the second page. So here, what they're doing, they're talking about pension poaching prevention. Spot a scam, stop a scam, be prepared, be educated, be vigilant. There's their word again, educated, all right? What is VA pension program? So I'm not going to get into that uh, paragraph. A lot of my videos, I haven't done any videos on pension. I concentrate more on the compensation side. But veterans and or their spouses can apply for pension. So a lot of veterans that can't get compensation for whatever reason, they opt in and try and go and get pension instead, okay? But I'm going to leave that up there for a few seconds so you can read it. But I want to point out that the VA has provided a couple links where they talk about pension eligibility criteria can also be found online. Here is the link. So they're talking about, when you click one of these links, they're going to be talking about what is the criteria for veterans' pension? What does veteran? What criteria the, does a veteran need to meet to obtain pension? And also, what criteria does the surviving spouse of the veteran need to meet for pension? They're giving you the link. Don't go down to your local uh, veteran hub and somebody at the bar telling you this, 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 and this. Get it straight from the, the horse's mouth. They're giving you the link, okay? This is their criteria. So you go there, read it, get educated, 
before you apply for that pension benefit to make sure you meet the criteria, okay? Now, it also, the, the uh, another paragraph here says, what is pension poaching, okay? And I'm just gonna read the first sentence. Pension poaching is a financial scam targeting veterans, survivors, and their families who are potentially eligible for VA benefits, okay? And then on the um, second page here, it also goes on uh, and it talks about uh, they have a searchable list of accredited VSOs, uh, veteran service organizations or officers, agents and attorneys is available at the VA office of the general counsel's website. So they're giving you a list of those individuals. And then it says, can an accredited attorney or claims agent who is also a financial planner charge a fee for preparing a claim for pension or survivor's benefits? And it says no, okay. Who, who can guarantee veterans and their families will receive benefits from the VA? No one can guarantee that the VA will award you a benefit or service, not even someone who is VA accredited, okay? Only the VA can determine eligibility and award benefits and services, all right? So the VA is giving you a lot of information in the email that they sent out and in the pension poaching document that's linked in that email, okay? So I talked to a lot of veterans and they'll say, well, hey, I talked to this company and they said that they can guarantee this and they can guarantee that. And I'm like, no, no one can do that because the VA has their own regulations and requirements that they have to follow. I'm not saying all VA employees follow it because if you've been in that process, you know that's just not true, okay? But they're supposed to follow these guidelines, okay? And that human factor. So even if someone says, hey, I was 11 Bravo, I was infantryman, I was combat engineer, 12 Bravo, 13 Bravo, field artilleryman, cannon crew member, I was exposed to a lot of acoustic trauma, and I guarantee you I can get you service connected for tonight. That's just not so because there's still criteria that their veteran needs to meet. And then you have that human factor at the regional office, the VA employee. And then you have another human factor when you go to that CEP exam, that examiner. So no one can say they can guarantee you anything. Now, when people, when veterans call me, I do guarantee them this. If you don't get educated on this process, your frustration level is gonna go up, okay? Your anxiety is going to go up because the VA is going to be throwing stuff at you and you're not going to know how to deal with it, okay? So I tell veterans, get educated, not frustrated, and elite to alleviate some of that frustration, all right? Okay, now, as I stated earlier, I'm going to give you some things that could possibly help you if someone's trying to scam. So if you're seeing any of my other videos about high level review, uh, pills or whatever, okay? And you get that phone call for the informal conference. Some of the things that I would ask, what is your name? They're not going to give you their full name or first name. What is your job title? What regional office do you work out of? What is the three-digit code of that regional office? Are you affiliate? Are you a VA employee? That could be the first question. Are you an actual VA employee? or you're a third party contractor, or you're not affiliated with the VA at all, where are you located? If they say no to those particular questions, but their first question, if they're not the VA, they're not affiliated, they're not representing the VA, then that might be a scammer. Could be, not saying that it is, but these are questions that you wanna ask because when the VA contacts you, they're gonna ask you some questions to verify that is actually you, the veteran that they're talking to, unless the veteran has a, has completed a third party consent form to sell, for someone like a family member, a spouse, or a family, another family member, uh, of or a sibling to speak on their behalf. Okay, but if that's the case, then you and the veteran has already filled that out, and you'll know which password it is and what's needed to uh, verify, okay? Uh, I've been called from an individual from the uh, my local VA uh, medical center 
And they said, you know, they asked me, are you Dwayne Kimball? Yes. And then they asked me to verify some information. But one of the questions that struck me and gave me a moment of pause, they asked me for my social security number. And I said, ma'am, I'm not going to give you my social security number. And she got kind of upset or offended. And I said, the reason why I'm not doing that, because there's other ways that you can verify that it's me. And second, whenever I go to a VA outpatient clinic or I go to a VA a medical center and check in at a dental or on my team to see my primary care physician, they only ask me for my last four of my social security number and on my ID card. So I know you can verify it by my last four. I gave my last four, she verified it, set the appointment up, went to the appointment and that was it, okay? So always be skeptical when someone calls you and start asking you for this information, whether if it's dealing with the VA or not. But those are some things that I think if you get a phone call that could help you, the veteran and your family members, okay? So if you are a fiduciary for a particular uh, veteran or elderly, do the same thing, okay? Because you do, you definitely do not want to get scammed, all right? So with that being said, please like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and go ahead and share this video uh, with other veterans. Again, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you.